to progress to the higher levels of the game, decision making with and without the ball are one of, if not the key differentiator between good, great and world class. When you are out on the pitch, it can seem like you have a million options available to you and that you have to decide what to do in a fraction of a second or you end up losing the ball or the chance gets away from you. A key learning I had in my own career a few years ago and which have helped me immensely over the years was to simplify the decision making process and understand that when we're out on the field, we only really have three options available available to us, both with and without the ball. Today I will share what these three options are, which options are the best, and how you can level up your own game and football IQ by understanding these three simple options. Let's begin. First of all, we have to understand that time and space is the key to everything we do on the pitch, whether we have the ball or a teammate has it. Also how much time and space we have and in what area that time and space is presented to us. Now then, in this first scenario, we have a limited time and space. We may have received the ball and a defender is tied on our back, or a teammate is under heavy pressure from the opposition. In these instances, what we want to do is opt for the first out of these three options, which is maintenance. Maintenance means that we are realistically not in a moment where we can play the ball forward because you or your teammate are under heavy pressure or you have limited space to operate with. During these times, all we want to do is maintain possession of the ball and play it safe. Which could be to just recycle possession if you're on the ball yourself or offer an outlet to your teammate to offload the ball to. In our priorities, what we want to do with the ball, maintenance is at the bottom of that list. Bear a few exceptions that I will mention at the end of this video. Now, moving up that list, we arrive at progression. At this point, you may have received the ball and been able to turn and face forward, or the opposition has backed off and therefore your teammate has more time and space to pick a pass. Then we may want to opt for progression of the ball. This means that we're not just maintaining possession, but instead we're being more aggressive in our decision making to try to progress the play forward to be able to create offensive opportunities. The more often you can make these more progressive plays, regardless of your position, the more of a danger you're gonna be to the opposition. Arriving at the last and greatest decision you can make on the ball and what really separates good from world class players is the frequency in which they successfully decide and execute chance creation decisions. This is a time when you go for that final pass, dribble or offer that run that leads to a goal scoring opportunity. This is when you have more time and space on the ball and you're not under immense pressure, hence why you have the time and space to go for this option. Take a look at this example from this play I made against guys last season, where I quickly sort through my decision making to find the most dangerous option possible available to me and it led to an assist. Now, there are a few things that dictates how aggressive you can be in your decision making. Having great vision and awareness on the ball will help you speed up your decision making and in turn lead you to play the more dangerous options consistently. Also, your technical quality on the ball also influences how well and how often you can execute said decisions. A bad first touch may example lead to you having to go for maintenance rather than progression or chance creation and a chance may go to waste. Everything is not black and white though. I'd say that 95% of the time these rules apply, but there are times from game to game when things change. If you're defending a 1-0 lead at the end of the game, it could be a wiser move to opt for maintenance rather than progression or chance creation to defend that lead and maintain possession of the ball, even if you have the chance to be more aggressive and play forward. A final tip is if you have videos of yourself playing, try to count how many times you go for maintenance for progression or for chance creation. Then you can analyze it even further. Why don't I play the progression options more often? Well, it could be because the pass from my teammate is too slow into me so that when I receive the ball, the chance is no longer available to play that uh, progressive or chance creation pass. Or it could also be because I currently do not have the technical skill set to play, uh, for example, a longer pass. Uh, so I may have to practice that more in training. Now, executing these three decisions in a correct manner as often as possible will get you closer to your goals. There are some mistakes that you want to avoid though on your quest to sign your first professional contract. So make sure to check out this video where I go over the seven mistakes that I made on my way to signing my first professional contract. That's all for this time. Take care and I'll see you in the next one.